Father Paul Burney. I'm a retired priest of the Archdiocese of Atlanta. And in the name of our pastor, Monsignor Daniel Stack, our parochial vicar, Father Roberto Herrera, and myself, of course, I'd like to welcome you to our Sunday celebration of the Eucharist. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. And once again, Jesus speaks to us words of encouragement and challenge and words of promise as well. Once again, welcome and please enjoy and be challenged by our celebration today. Lord Jesus, love incarnate, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, presence of God, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, abundant life, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. You are the Lord. You are. 
Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Sing a 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God, put to death in the flesh. He was brought to life in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me. But you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Context. It's so very important. Things can mean so many different things depending on the setting. What would be acceptable as humorous and funny in one place would be totally inappropriate in another. It's terrible when that happens to us. We think we're being funny and we said the wrong thing. As we come to these last weeks of Easter, it's so important to understand the context in which the words of Jesus we will hear were first spoken. He's not on a mountain or in a boat preaching to the crowds. He's not uh, challenging the Pharisees or criticizing the 
religious leaders for their obstinacy. No, this is a very personal and loving setting. John devotes four full chapters to words Jesus speaks immediately after the Last Supper. These are some of them. They're spoken to the apostles, his closest friends, and they're probably some of the most memorable words of John's Gospel. Words like, I am the vine, you are the branches. And I give you a new command, love one another as I have loved you. And I no longer call you servants, but friends. Way too many words to relay right now, four chapters worth of course. All of them are sort of like a meditation after communion. The apostles having shared the Eucharist for the first time, who hear Jesus speaking these tender, personal things. And it's in that context for us who still eat and drink with him to really hear and drink them in. The gospel passage we just heard follows immediately upon the last words, last gospel, last week's words, right? in which Jesus told us that he's going on ahead to prepare a place. Remember, all those mansions made ready, a dwelling place. He told us he is the way, the truth, and the life. And to see him is to see the Father. Today he continues that theme by promising in his absence to send the Holy Spirit to those who would keep his commandments. He uses the word advocate to describe the relationship of the Holy Spirit to ourselves. That word is a difficult one to translate from the Greek. The Greek is parakios, and it's rendered in English apparently, huh? or if you will, consoler, or comforter. This Holy Spirit is being compared to a lawyer who pleads for his or her client in the court of law, someone who speaks for another in their defense. The Latin word spiritus, where we get our word spirit, is really a translation of the Hebrew word ruach, which means breath as well as spirit. When Adam is created out of the dust, God breathes Ruach's, his spirit, into him, and he has life. In Hebrew, it's a feminine word. So if we were speaking of the Holy Spirit in Hebrew, we would refer to the Holy Spirit as she. There is, by reason of language, a sort of feminine quality to this word used by Jesus to describe the third person of the Godhead. It's not present in English, that character. Now, I'm not saying that God is feminine any more than I'm saying that God is masculine. What I'm saying is that these qualities of nurturing and caring of giving birth, of nourishing and protecting one's children, as only a mother can do, is being described to our loving God, as well as those qualities of fatherhood, especially when we speak of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit's actions in our lives and in our world. When I hear the word advocate, I ask them to try to see it as a parent's way of advocating for a child rather than a lawyer's. It's the kind of way a parent would risk their own life to protect and to defend their child that comes to mind. The way they sacrifice their own comfort for the sake of their child. 
That's the word comforter. It's the way they would tend to the wounds of their child, pulling out the splinter, cleansing and bandaging the hurt, tending to them when they are feverish and sick during the night, holding them as well to heal the wounds of their hearts. And so the word consoler. This is the kind of image which comes closer to what Jesus is talking about in the Gospel today. Not the paid aggregate who could be cold and detached and even refuse to defend someone if there is no fee, but the kind of aggregate we find in a parent who is a natural aggregate, a consoler, a comforter, and a challenger as well, as parents so often do. Must be. This is the Holy Spirit, the ultimate gift of Jesus to us, who challenges us to be faithful to the commandment of love, and who will bind us as beloved children in the same love that Jesus and the Father share. And it's the same Spirit that comes to us again today as in every Sabbath, as especially in the Eucharist. Jesus is perfect gift to us, who invites us to yield ourselves to him and to the Father and to the Holy Spirit. Having heard God's word, we respond to it with the creed we call the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Keeping his commandments and walking in the way of love, we pray for our world in need of healing and hope. For the church around the world, for all who witness in word and deed the good news of the risen Lord, we pray that our hearts reflect your love, O God. Let that our hearts reflect your love, O God. God. For those who exercise leadership in our world. For first responders, for medical personnel, and all on the front lines of the pandemic. For those who face devastating financial loss. We pray that our, our hearts, hearts reflect, reflect your love, O oh God. God. For teachers, and tutors, for young people in their search for friendship and community, for renewed hope in those discouraged by failure. We pray, let our hearts, hearts reflect your love, O oh God. God, for our parish community, scattered and broadened, yet gathered into one by the love of God. For our young people who await First Holy Communion. For our elect and candidates who await the sacraments of initiation. We pray, let our, our hearts reflect your love, O oh God. For the sick, for those with mental illness, and for those who struggle with addiction. For those who must now wait for surgical procedures or other treatment. 
for all whom we have loved in this life but see no longer. We pray. Let our hearts reflect your love, O God. Not, in or not as orphans did Jesus leave us, loving Father. For he promised to give us another advocate, the Spirit of Truth, to be with us forever. So indeed, let your Spirit abide with us always, to keep us steadfast in suffering, gentle in bearing witness, and always faithful in keeping Christ's commandments, who lives with you in the Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, and the praise of the Lord May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this season, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they claim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting of your sacrifice may be made to the glory of your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing 
the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal gift to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, his brother Bishop Berger and Joel, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. We graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold him 
who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Never permit me to be separated from you. resurrection of his only son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption give you gladness by his blessing amen 
May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of, ever of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a manner on this earth, a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. And go in peace, glorify God with your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 